What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now today I wanted to bring to you a video discussing the potential sleeper decks that could be coming up for YCS Seattle. Now John Moore aka House of Champions already did a video on this relatively recently and it was a really interesting video because he discussed full power DDD as a very competitive option and kind of a sleeper for YCS Seattle alongside Infernoid as well because the market hasn't exactly reacted to the fact that lawn mowing is going to be coming out in Raging Tempest and that's going to have a pretty significant effect on Infernoid's potential to do competitively well, especially at YCS Seattle. But I'm going to take it a step further and do something that a lot of people probably aren't even thinking about at the moment and bringing up the fact that, you know, with Raging Tempest's arrival, we still have some Spiral and Sub-Terror support cards that have yet to be revealed. Now, before you hit the dislike button, let me go ahead and explain where I'm going with this. So there's about three to four cards for each of these archetypes that is yet to be revealed. And ju judging on potentially how powerful these cards are once we know what they are, that could pretty much change the entire game. You know, we already know that the Zodiacs are coming out in Raging Tempest, and that's pretty much going to be the deck to beat going into YCS Seattle, but the engine's also very splashable, and you can pretty much play it in a myriad of different decks, if not like every single deck, because the engine's so simple, it pretty much fits no matter where you put it. So, with that said, if the Spiral or Subterror support cards come out, and they're just like completely fucking busted, and make the deck easily tier 1, that's going to make things rather interesting, because normally we watch the OCG to see what's going to be good in the future, but because Spirals and Subterrors are TCG exclusive archetypes, we don't really have that foresight to be able to do that and know what exactly is coming. We're not going to know what these cards are to maybe 3 weeks away from YCS Seattle, potentially 2, depending on if the Konami blog reveals them one by one, like they typically do, but it really is dependent on that. It's also dependent on if someone can construct the build that really is the build that can just compete with Zodiac's, you know, Lawn Mowing Infernoid and everything else that's going to be at YCS Seattle. Because, you know, right now, obviously Spirals and Subterrors aren't doing the best. They might make like a regional top here or there, but on the YCS level, you're not seeing them at the top tables hardly at all. They're not making the top cuts, you know, so the decks are faring okay, you know, on that regional level, but not really going beyond that. But if they get some busted, and I mean fucking busted support card, like, remember back in the Noble Knight days how everyone was always saying, if we get that one card for Noble Knights, like, it's going to be, like, the best fucking deck ever? And then we never fucking got the card, and the deck pretty much still stayed where it was. Well, that's pretty much where we're at right now with Spirals and Subterrors. You know, the decks are faring okay, but if the deck wants to just be over-the-top, amazing Tier 1 meta, it needs to have that busted fucking card that makes you go, like, plus 2 or plus 3 for practically nothing. And then, more likely than not, you're probably going to combine that with the Zodiac engine, because having Drancias and shit is just fucking crazy. So, you know, overall... Depending on what this support is, it could be a real game changer for YCS Seattle. And I think a lot of people are overlooking this, mainly because, just, just imagine what's going to happen. When someone figures out the correct build, this is assuming that we get the crazy broken support, but let's say someone figures out the build that, like, it counters Zodiacs, it can compete with Infernoid, with ABC, with Metal Foe, all this stuff. And then imagine what's going to happen to the market. Someone's going to figure it out, or a group of people are going to figure it out. They're going to start buying out, like, sub terror Nemesis Archers, or they're going to start buying out, like, the Super Agents, or, like, all the expensive cards, and they're going to start forcing the price up, and people are going to notice that, so that's going to cause extreme buyouts, or at YCS Seattle itself, people are going to be going to the vendors like, hey, I need these cards, because they're not going to have time to get them in time, because Raging Tempest only comes out one week before YCS Seattle, so it would just be complete paranoia and pandemonium, and I think it would be fucking hilarious to watch that happen. Granted, all of those, you know, conditions are met, but that might be asking a little bit too much, but, you know, Spirals, they have some pretty good synchro builds that can churn out things like Naturia Beast, so, you know, if you have Naturia Beast backed by Drancy and some back row, that's pretty good, and then sub terrors can obviously flood the field with monsters as well, so who knows what's going to happen. You know, obviously, you know, we already kind of have the meta pretty much figured out for YCS Seattle, but you know what? You never know what's going to happen with those TCG exclusives because 
I mean, we <laughs> we have plenty of examples in the past where we've had some broken fucking TCG exclusives. So that's all my thoughts on this, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this. But I just really want to know if you guys think that, you know, if you are going to be playing Spirals or Subterrors for the event or in the future, like, I pray that you get good support because I want to see the decks do well. I love a multi-deck format and I love the diversity. So, again, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what kind of broken shit the decks need to be able to compete. As always, guys, be sure to like the video. As always, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content and be sure to back me on Patreon because by pledging a dollar a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again. We'll see you next time.